solar water sustainability. How cutting edge research is capturing water to tackle scarcity. Gui Hua Yu, the University of Texas at Austin. On November 9th, 1989, I was a third grade student and aware of this historical event from international news. The memorable image I could recall from television was that many families were reuniting in Germany. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure and honor to be here to share about our research on the topic of addressing energy water accessibility. So as we know, water is essential to our life. So using water, our body can function well. So as a universal solvent that helps transport oxygen and nutrient throughout, nutrient throughout our body, so water enables many functions for living organisms. So as this slide shows, so the water contains, the, our human body contains over 60 to 70% of water, and the water helps us to maintain and regulate our body temperature and digest the food and flushing out all like, unwanted toxins from, from our body. So people believe is the, without water, so we cannot survive even for three days. Water and energy are at the heart of sustainable development for human society. So clean water and energy are always intertwined to each other. Both are essential for human life. So currently, there are 3 billion people living in the high water stress areas. More importantly, with population growth, economy growth, and climate change, they are driving more and more global demands for clean energy and clean water. So that to the unprecedented levels, as population, uh, as this slide shows, by 2040, there's a growing um, unprecedented level of water shortage. So there's not to mention, there's a worsening situation due to the water pollution and uneven distribution of water resources. So in recent decades, particularly since the pandemic, there's this growing concept of water, energy, food nexus, which attracted significant attention across academic research. So this concept emphasize the key idea of the production, consumption, chain of the water, energy, food are all intricately related to each other, and critically important for the future water, energy, food nexus is to create more sustainable and climate resilient solutions. So this requires transition to renewable energy to make the overall process more sustainable as well as developing non, uh, decentralized solution to make our community more resilient. So water scarcity is a serious global um, crisis with increased wa uh, world population, but very limited fresh water resource. We have to tap into this most abundant water source, such as the seawater, which, con uh, which contains over 90% of the earth water. So how to turn seawater into usable clean water becomes one of the most promising yet pressing scientific and technological challenges of our time. So hopefully today I'm going to show you these two promising solutions that can address this need of creating clean water using only sunlight and air. So there are several industry level of desalination technology, such in this slide shows the membrane to the left is membrane based the reverse osmosis process and the right is the thermal-based desalination. So they critically depend on the um, natural water source and more feasible in the coast area, and also it is more suitable for uh, centralized production, often involving the high infrastructure costs and also high energy consumption. For example, a typical seawater RO plant requires about two to three kilowatt hour to produce one cubic meter of the water. And a thermal desalination plant can use up to 10 times of that amount of water. Now, these critical um, constraints call for significant technology innovation. So one of the grand challenges is how to use renewable energy to produce clean water. And as we know, sunlight is the most abundant and sustainable energy source. So solar-powered water purification is a promising means, sometimes called solar steel, or solar vapor generation to produce clean water from seawater or even wastewater. So critical challenge here is sunlight is diffusive. It cannot meet high demand for efficient water evaporation and often require very complex solar concentrator to produce enough uh, uh, clean water. So there are key, three key steps in this technology. 
One is you need to have very high solar absorption. And the second is you want them to concentrate your heat at water and air interface. So this really motivates um, the, the conventional bulk heating to avoid, to avoid the energy loss to the bulk heating to the interfacial evaporation, the constant light to do the job of evaporating water very efficiently. That also requires sufficient water transport to the evaporation front to maintain the high evaporation rate. So to address these uh, challenges, we turn to the soft matter, particularly hydrogels. As the previous speaker shows, the, the, the hydrogel can be very useful in many ways. Traditionally, you can find it in our common life. For example, baby diapers, the contact lenses, and even for many of the biological related applications. So hydrogel is jello-like structures, and from material level, it is a highly cross-linked network that can contain a significant amount of water and then maintaining these 3D structures. So in 2018, we demonstrated hydrogel, the first hydrogel evaporator that is actually having two key components. One is the solar absorptive PPY, that's the polypyrrole, and the other is hydrophilic PVA, polyvinyl alcohols with the hierarchical nanostructures. So they can offer very efficient water transport to the evaporation sur uh, surfaces. But also, most importantly, they can confine this solar absorbed energy to localize the heat up these molecular meshes. So we discovered these hydrogel are very unique, and they have this highly tunable solar evaporation behavior. Given this polymer chemistry, you can change polymer water interaction. So they are really like no other materials. So our first generation of the hydrogel evaporator already yielding these record high solar evaporation rates. So this plot actually shows how we compare with state of the art previously reporting literature. So we are double of what has been reported, over three kilograms of the water per square meter of active gel and also per hour. And that's also more than three times of the commercial solar steels. So our prototype design, based on our gel evaporator put on top of our engineering building, already yields the potential daily water, about 20 water, uh, 25 liter per square meter of these active gels. That is actually enough clean water for a household of four. So uh, with this initial um, discovery, we have greatly expanded these research directions to show hydrogel as a very powerful platform for solar water purification. So this slide highlights several key areas from Understanding, better understanding the polymer and the solar absorptive particle interaction for energy confinement and to regulating polymer water interaction by tuning polymer hydrability, polymer network, by exploring surface topology, surface wet wetting effects, and then to design more additive functions such as antibacteria, anti fouling, and VOC removal functions. But all these efforts, as with goal, of producing hydrogel-based solar purification systems for household needs and potentially even for a larger system. So today I'm going to show you another very promising um, technology is a tapping into atmosphere water, which has over 13,000 cubic kilometer of the water. So it is very ubiquitous and it's sustainable water source. It's present anytime and anywhere. And there are two current technology, including fog collections, doing, so they actually will allow the, these, uh, the collection, but with very clear geographic and climate conditions limitation. They are highly dependent on relative humidity and temperature, and also doing is a process very energy intensive. So sorption-based moisture harvesting actually can go over this limitation on the geography or hydrological conditions, so to pro really promote the global needs. So we have been focusing on sorption-based atmosphere water harvesting for the recent years. So two fundamental steps in this technology. So the first is moisture sorption. So this typically is through the physical or chemical interaction between water vapor and your sorbent materials. So the most important is actually the second step. As we know, that's kind of lower humidity, they can absorb the water, but you're never producing clean water out of that because high absorption at first step often means the high energy penalty when you want to release water. Usually evolves significant heat to go over this evaporation condensation process to get clean water. So we actually demonstrate to the field is there's a new functions that you don't need to go over this significant energy barrier to use some responsive gel, they can actually can directly release your stored water in a liquid state directly to the clean water. 
So traditionally, um, atmosphere water harvesting materials based on these desiccant type of uh, uh, materials. For example, here showing the silicon gels, they are highly polar kind of hydroxy group. They're offering these hydrogen bonds and they actually with the water vapor. So zeolite is these 3D network um, uh, molecules with the silica and also the uh, um, uh, ruminant in, um, you, with the alkaline metals. They offer, often use the alumina as active sites, but they have generally have limited water uh, capacity. Hygroscopic salts that can offer water absorption usually at the lower humidity, but often comes, uh, comes with challenges. They do have the particle aggregation during hydration, so lead to quickly decayed uh, performance for water harvesting. And overall, the, the, quick, the, the key challenge here is for desorption steps, the high energy demand still needed for water release. So we demonstrate to the field that hydrogel is very unique. Right? They have a very, very functional chemistry that can tune the water polymer interactions. So they can potentially address these with the thermal responsive behavior, changing from water-like, so-called hydrophilic state, to the water-dislike, hydrophobic state without these, these very big energy, par uh, en energy penalty you need to pay. And also, hydrogel is a highly swellable network, so they can offer this high water capacity. So they do have these two major advantages. So uh, back in the time of around 2017, 2018, as we work on the gels for solar evaporation, we also developed another class of the gel. We call it a super moisture absorbent gel. So this gel also contains two, in key, two key ingredients. One is hygroscopic polymer based on polypyrrole chloride. The other is hydrophilicity, uh, hydrophilicity switchable polymer that can switch from water alike to water dislike. And most important, as I mentioned in the last slide, right? So the high barrier that you go over, that you need to go over for conventional absorbents. Right now, you can have very energy efficient water release. So as you can see from this slide, there is a video showing water that actually can be come out very quickly with, within these bulk gels with a simple sunlight. And this slide highlights two key advantages, as I mentioned, for smack gel base. The first step is you have these highly hydrated states that you have swabble now, so it really functions as water sponges to absorb the water. And most importantly, they can offer this express mode of water release, so without paying the, these large energy barriers. So our solar-powered gel-based AWH devices already can produce water yield around 20 to 40 liter per kilograms at various RH. But our first generation has a limitation. They don't work well at low humidity. So in recent years, we already developed a better, uh, better version. So low-cost gel film made of biomass materials. So they can actually pull the water even from the, the extreme like dried airs. And overall, sorbent uh, material cost is uh, only about $2 per kilogram. So we use, in this design, we use renewable cellulose and a common kitchen um, uh, ingredient called the uh, Kanji gun. So they can offer these open structures that to um, have control the loading of inorganic salt to, to work at the lower humidities, but also they, with these thermal responsive properties from these cellulose, they can actually offer very highly efficient uh, water release steps. So what we demonstrate here is at a different relative humidity. For example, in a very dry desert area, so conventional solvent, they can only produce about three liters of water. So this will be from conventional solvents, three liters. If you use our gels, so they can get is at relative humidity, about 20 to, 30, 20 to 30, they will get all 10 to 11 liters of water. If we use Berlin as an example, around average yearly uh, humidity of around 60 to 70 percent, you can produce how much is over 20 liters of the water, right? So you really need to have a strong man to carry how much water you can produce per kilogram of these active gel materials. Thank you. So material innovation uh, on um, atmosphere water harvesting can go really go beyond. So we demonstrated recently, we can create this concept called cell water in soil that integrates smack gels coated with very dry sands that you don't think it's possible to grow crops. Right now, you can turn them to mimic what nature can do. Right? At night, they absorb the water slowly, and at daytime, sunlight comes in, they slowly release water. And in at least past summer, we demonstrate a smart soil 2.0. So we incorporate both self-watering effect as well as slow fertilizer nutrient release. 
So this is addressing another kind of challenges for con conventional agriculture. Oftentimes, this over-fertilizing will cause land degradation. So this design potentially can mimic all the nature process. So at night, slow release of water and the nutrient at daytime. So this is actually can be helpful design for modern um, ag uh, sustainable agriculture. So looking beyond, so to ultimately make <coughs> breaking the wall of energy water accessibility, it's essential we're all working together, as well as we need to working with many next generation, many young minds inspiring them as a next generation scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, to translate scientific discovery to impactful technology to address grand challenges. Thank you.